Hi, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as Mark said, my name is Kate. Uh, I graduated in the fall of 2020, it's technically 2021, um, as a CIS major. Um, and yeah, now I work at Liberty Mutual as a software engineer, but we can kind of start on um, my time at Bentley. So like I said, I was a CIS major. I minored in information design and corporate communication. I took um, some of the UX classes. I thought that that was kind of, you know, maybe front end would be more of my interest potentially. Um, was intrigued by the design, all that kind of stuff. Um, my favorite class, I don't even know if it's offered anymore, was Android application development. It was really cool. Um, it was kind of like pulling together all the things I had learned in a bunch of different classes and um, finally got to put it all into one project instead of just doing like a Java go-kart project or something like that, which are super great and informative, but it was cool to actually see something pretty tangible and something more like what you would be doing in the real world at your job. Um, and that was, I don't know, like CS four eighty four three something like that. So it took a couple classes to get there. Um, I started in the sandbox uh, my sophomore year and it was great, had a great time. <laughs> And I also worked another job on campus. I worked in athletics marketing um, all four years, throwing t-shirts and giving away free stuff at every event, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so the way I got started um, with Liberty was I attended the Women in Technology Summit uh, the summer going into junior year. Um, and it was a really great experience, came to the office, um, got to do a couple labs and just kind of met people talked about, you know, what it's like to work there, the different roles, whether you wanted to be a product owner or a software engineer or a scrum master or anything of the sorts, kind of like that. Um, it was definitely interesting because I hadn't really had much exposure to those specific roles, like learning what a product owner was, what exactly a scrum master did, you know, how an agile team works um, and all that kind of stuff. So I found that to be super beneficial and so then through that I interned as a software engineer intern at Liberty Mutual the summer of 2020 so it was actually totally virtual um I know that like a ton of my friends their internships got canceled mine did not I still had a full full-time internship the whole summer it was like 10 or 12 weeks something like that and that was super awesome I think that speaks a lot to Liberty as a company that they were still willing to commit to their interns and like provide them with a full internship um, that was really great. And I definitely learned a lot. I felt really prepared for that internship through a lot of my classes and to get that internship through career development. I'm sure you guys have all heard the story a million times, but, um, yeah. So through that, I, in my internship, I worked with a low code, no code, uh, software called Uncork. Not sure if anybody's familiar with it. And I was working, um, on a, I guess I could go ahead and skip to the next slide, uh, to help develop an underwriting, a specialty underwriting application. Um, and so that was a really great experience. I was on a team of five interns, but I don't know if any of you have interned at Liberty, you could be just yourself on a team, just your own intern, or you could be like with me, with five other interns. Um, that was a really great experience, particularly being virtual, kind of had like a, my own little team to hang out with all the time. Um, and, you know, obviously get work done too. But so that was a really great experience. Everyone was very kind, willing to help teach because Uncork was this brand new tool, something I'd never had experience with, obviously at Bentley, um, but ha still had those kind of like engineering principles behind it. It was more of like a configuration tool, if anything. Um, and what I will say about the internship is though it was such a positive experience and I really enjoyed it was an experience where it taught me what I didn't want to do. And I knew I didn't really think that I wanted to stay with a low code, no code tool. Um, yeah, it was a great experience for me because I also did not feel that I was the most confident in my coding skills. I didn't feel like I was a very strong engineer. And I think, you know, when I reflect on my time at Bentley, I was, not, I really struggled with a lot of my classes, I didn't think I could be a software engineer. I was kind of scared for graduating. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do because I don't think I can do this. And maybe this doesn't sound very inspirational, might even sound like a little bit of a downer, but like, I feel like I'm proof that 
if you know if I can do it anybody can and like you know you can you learn so much at school and you also learn so much on the job at the same time as well um so I think that if you feel like you're struggling in some of your classes right now that's definitely something to keep in mind that you know school is one thing work is very different um and Liberty in particular you know they foster a really great learning environment and so I can kind of get into that with the tech start rotational program so from my internship I actually extended my internship into the fall which is totally a thing you can do I had no idea one of my mentors told me about it if you ever intern with us I would totally or anywhere honestly I would totally recommend asking hey, do you have space for me in the fall? Could I stay on? Could I come back in the spring? Something like that. That's definitely something to think about that people maybe don't talk about as much, but like, you know, the worst they can do is say no. Um, but anyway, so stayed on um, through my fall semester, senior year, and then I graduated in the fall and started working full-time because it was early 2021 and there was nothing else to do. So I started, um, and they didn't quite have, they normally do like January cohorts for the tech start rotational program, but they just like weren't doing one that year. So I stayed in where I was as an intern and what they were calling a short-term assignment. So they were able to be flexible with me with what I was doing. And I think there were like 10 other people in my situation as well. So I think that that was really awesome that they were able to help me through, you know, that kind of weird transition moment and still provide me with a job, which was really great. Um, even though it was still in that same space that I knew I wasn't quite happy with, but I knew I had the rotational program coming. But so anyways, the rotational program is one month of technical training, and then it's four to six months of what we call team assignment. And then it's four to six months of individual assignment. So it's around a year-ish long. Um, and it was honestly kind of the perfect length to me, I thought. Um, so team assignment, you end up just with a team of your peers to like three to four other engineers and you're kind of working on a project it's pretty low stakes and you're just kind of showing what you can do trying to learn as much as you can that kind of thing it's super fun because you're just working with people your age and it's great and then you move into individual assignment where they send you tons of surveys and all this kind of stuff on like what do you actually like to do do you like front end do you like back end all that kind of stuff and so for me I was in my team assignment working in a bit of a full stack position um but i ended up moving on to a team that was like 90 percent front end so it was a lot of react a lot of javascript which was my time as the front end engineer um i love react it was super awesome i really enjoyed working in it um and then uh, about a year ago my team made a pivot to working completely back end they had history as back end engineers so we moved into back end and now i work primarily with typescript java you know, a bunch of AWS services like Lambdas, if there's any, you know, keywords that you guys are getting with that. But um, yeah, and it's funny because if you had told me at Bentley that I am doing what I was doing now, I probably would have laughed in your face because I wouldn't have thought it would be possible. But here I am. Honestly, even like working as a backend engineer, I wouldn't have believed that because I felt like the only thing that I would be able to do would be, you know, like CSS in the front end. And that's totally not it. I think that once you learn one language, it's super easy to understand and pick up other ones. And even if you don't have a full grasp of the syntax, that's totally fine. You don't need it. Like that's what Google's for. And it's your friend and it'll help you and you can kind of fake it till you make it kind of thing. And like, you will figure it out. Um, maybe I shouldn't be saying Google is your friend at an academic <laughs> talk, but... <laughs> Um, but anyway, so yeah, I think that a big part of what I've learned since being at Bentley is that you need to be really confident in yourself and your work. And, you know, it sounds like such a silly little thing, but it really goes a long way and can get you further along in your career and can get you to better spots. Because I think that if I hadn't advocated for myself and pushed myself to doing really uncomfortable things, then I probably never would have done them and who knows where I would be. I could still be in like a low code, no code space, wondering when I was ever going to start doing something that I really wanted to do. Nothing against low code, no code, super cool, very innovative space. I think it's really awesome. Um, just wasn't for me. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my, my, my big spiel. Um, definitely feel free to pop in and ask any questions um, at any moment, but yeah. 
So, and I can definitely get into more like the nitty gritty of what I did as a front end engineer, what I did as a back end engineer, what it is an intern or like the different classes that I took at Bentley and were there ones that I thought were more helpful or stuff like that. Definitely kind of want to make this more of like a conversation. Um, if anybody has any like specific questions. If you have questions, either type them in the chat or if, or if you're not comfortable raising your hand and then I'll read them along or you can uh, raise a hand and, and we will talk uh, and we'll call on you. Otherwise, we'll call on you anyway. Um, Kate, in the meanwhile, can you talk a little bit about the difference between front end and back end applications so that everybody has an idea what you're talking about? Yeah, definitely. So when you think of the front end, it's kind of what you see. Um, so for example, when I was working as a front end engineer, if you were to go onto Liberty Mutual's website and you know fill out your information to try and get a quote for auto insurance, that is exactly what I was working on. Um, so I was working on, you know, the different components, you know, first name, last name, all that kind of stuff, and making sure that that information was getting channeled through to the back end, where is what I work now, where it's all the stuff that you don't really see, um, which I really enjoy. Um, I feel like with front end, there's, you know, there is a right answer and a wrong answer kind of thing, but it's more like a bit of design and you can kind of see what you're doing while you're doing it on one side, which is really cool. But what I really love about backend is you're working with a lot of different services. And so you're kind of sifting through logs and seeing different responses, figuring out how different APIs interact with one another instead of, you know, seeing how they interact with each other in a very, you know, neat cookie cutter way. You kind of have to dig for it, which I like. I think it's super interesting. Um, and yeah. So that's a little bit of the difference. Back, back end's kind of like behind the scenes, you know, the architecture of the different APIs kind of feeding the data where it needs to go, that kind of stuff. One question that came up in chat was, could you talk about your interview process? And what was that yeah, like? Definitely. Someone says, Jesus says, I know a lot of companies are asking technical questions about data structures and algorithms for software engineer positions. What was the inter like, interview pr process like for you? Yeah, definitely. So I intern I interviewed as for my internship, and then I um, was offered a job. So I didn't I didn't interview for the full time position. So I couldn't speak to that. But for the internship, um, I did go through a coding interview, and so I had to do a couple different exercises, and it could be in any language that I wanted. Um, I don't remember exactly what the exercises were, um, but they definitely, t I think I chose Java and um, just like tried to explain my way through what I was doing, even if what I was doing was wrong, which I'm pretty sure what I did was totally wrong, but I tried to explain my thought process and go through it pretty logically and got the internship. So that seemed to have worked. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that if you are doing it completely wrong or completely right, which would be great, um, just talking through your thought process, which is kind of a weird thing because when are you ever sitting around talking through what you're coding? Not super often. And I know, you know, sometimes you're like, you know, God and I only know <laughs> what I was trying to do when I coded that. But, you know, to be able to understand exactly what you're doing when you're doing it and why you're doing it and to be able to verbalize that, I think is super important for the interview process. Um, and there's a lot of great tools out there that you can do. Um, the, which are all escaping my mind right now, but I could definitely send some to Mark uh, when they come back to my mind. Um, but just like little tests that you can do that are supposed to simulate different um, coding problems that companies might give you um, in terms of like tests. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure that there are resources out there for that too. And I would definitely utilize them because all practice is good practice and you can never practice too much in my opinion, but also don't stress out about it too much. Like I said, I don't really think I did particularly well in my coding interview, but I think that I conveyed that, you know, though I was confused by the problem that I was trying to solve, I think that I conveyed that I was at least confident and at least trying to solve it. And so I think that that helped a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that answered the question. If it didn't, let me know. Hey, Jesus, do you want to ask a follow-up or is that okay? Thank you. I guess that's okay. Um, Avi has a question. Avi, do you want to ask it? Oh, Avi's mic okay. isn't. I'll ask it uh, so everyone can hear it. 
Was there a specific course that you took at Bentley that stands out in terms of helping you choose this particular career path? Uh, yes, yeah, so I actually think that it was the application development class that I took, um, even though I don't do Android application development now, or that's the only time that I've done it. But I think that it was pulling together a lot of different pieces that I had learned over the years um, at Bentley in my different computer classes that definitely helped a lot. Um, and it was just kind of cool to see all the different pieces come together because, you know, when you're working in, you know, a real job, it's not, you're not just doing this you're not just trying to test your knowledge on loops. Like you're, you are pulling in a bunch of different concepts all at once. And I think that that was really cool where I was seeing, okay, I can put all these things together and make something out of it. And that's really exciting. And, you know, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people leave Bentley and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, um, CIS majors, they'll go off and be consultants, which is super cool. I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't feel particularly like that was quite my fit. I wouldn't necessarily say I felt like being a software engineer was really my fit either. I just kind of decided to go for it. So, you know, I think that it was definitely a risk that I took, but I'm very glad that I did. It totally paid off. And, you know, it's not easy. It's definitely a challenge and every day is super different, which I really like. Um, and, you know, there's obviously, you know, different tickets that I have that come in tickets being, you know, like, pieces of work um that are similar and have similar patterns and things like that that help me solve you know the next problem but you know even today there's something that I'm kind of blocked on a little bit because it's just it's brand new information that I have not been around before there was prior context that would have been needed and so it's like okay well I need to kind of pause on this part but can I keep going with this you know I every day is very different and that is very exciting so if that appeals to you that's a great thing. I think something else to think of when you're thinking of your career is not even necessarily like the meat and the material of the class, but like, like I was saying, are things continually different? Do you like that? Or do you like something that's a little bit more repetitive that might help you kind of figure out, okay, I like doing the same thing over and over again. Maybe I should find a job that's kind of like that. Or I like things that are different. I like to be on my toes. I like to have a challenge problem to solve. You know, I kind of, want to not know what I'm doing and just get thrown into it, then that could be, you know, the kind of career that you want to go for. So what's an average work week like for you? Are you sitting in front of a computer all day? How much time do you spend in meetings? Do you, are you working from home a lot? I, it looks like you're in your office now. Yes. Yes. I, this is my desk. I am in the office now. Um, so I work in the office two days a week. Um, otherwise I work from home. I'm in front of my computer pretty much all day. I Liberty does offer very flexible work arrangements. So it, it's obviously different team by team, but I pretty much can work as long as I'm on for my meetings and on during our core working hours, which I think ours are nine to three. Um, you know, aside from like doctor's appointments and stuff, you, you can totally flex your time. Like for example, I work um, every other Friday because I work slightly longer hours Monday through Thursday, so I can have every other Friday off, which is super nice, or half days every Friday. You can kind of work it however you want. Um, in terms of meeting time, uh, software engineers don't like to have meetings. So I don't really have too, too many meetings, but I do um, have, uh, you know, obviously one-off meetings about different pieces of work that are coming into the funnel, but we do, um, I am on an agile team, which I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the agile methodology, but so we have, um, different ceremonies, um, which is just a fancy term for meetings, basically. And so we'll have stand up every day, which is like, you know, could be anywhere from five to 15. To, you know, if there's a lot to talk about, it could be 30 minutes. Um, it's just kind of like an update with your team every day. You know, I'll talk about what I worked on yesterday, what I'm planning to work on today. If I ran into anything that kind of blocked me a little bit, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, the whole team kind of cycles through that. And it kind of baselines everybody for the day so everybody knows where everyone's at what they did yesterday what the plan is for today and I think that's super helpful um, another one we have is called refinement where we work with our product owner who's kind of like the liaison with um, you know the other teams that we work with that are he tries to help us figure out the work that we need to do 
So he kind of has the business side of things and we bring the technical side. And so he says, we need this to be done on the business sides and we figure out what needs to be done technically in order to accomplish that goal. So that's what we do in refinement. Basically, we break that down into small pieces, which we call tickets. Um, and then, so that's kind of how we work. You know, I'll pick up a ticket. My teammate will pick up a ticket or we'll work on one together or something like that. Just kind of depends on what it is. Um, we also have retrospective, which is one of my favorite meetings because it's a little more laid back. You kind of just, we when you work in an agile methodology, if you're on a scrum team, which I am, um, you work in basically two week increments. So at the end of every two weeks, which is called a sprint, uh, we will kind of just reflect on the last sprint, talk about what went well, what didn't go well, and based on what did or didn't go well, you know, how can we improve that in the future? And, you know, we'll talk about like, oh, did you have a crappy sprint? Why? Like, how can we make that better? All that kind of stuff. Um, so that's super helpful. Uh, what else? Uh, we do have, my team does a sprint review where we kind of, or like a demo or something where you talk about what you did over the past sprint to stakeholders, which if you're someone who likes to talk and you're pretty extroverted like me, I really enjoy that because I can talk about the things that I did over the sprint and kind of present and, you know, tell a lot of people what we did and that kind of stuff. And it's good reflection to be like, oh my God, what did I do two weeks ago? I have no idea. And you kind of go back and remember all of that stuff, what kind of built up to the end of your sprint. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the main gist I'd say. Um, I maybe spend like 30% of my week in meetings and then the rest of it is pretty much heads down engineering. Obviously, as you become a higher up engineer, you'll spend more of your time in meetings because you could become like a tech lead or something where, you know, you are kind of a engineering liaison where you're talking about with, you know, architects and solutions engineers about, you know, higher level bigger bodies of work and how your team's going to break that down and then you take your little nugget back to your team and you kind of explain it to them what they're going to be doing um so but i'm i'm not a tech lead so i don't have to go to those meetings um megan has a question yeah. megan do you want to read it you would like me to megan megan says they can't okay what do project deadlines usually look like for you and your team are you paid hourly or based on a project or annually? And what is, what is that? How does that work? Um, yeah, so it depends um, on what kind of team you're on, what kind of space you're working in, what deadlines look like for you. For me, um, we kind of, we kind of set our own deadlines, which is really nice. Um, but you also don't want to set a deadline and tell your consumers that and then not meet your deadline. So, um, you know, we, our projects are pretty big. I'd say like right now I'm trying to roll out um, a big piece of functionality for personal lines. And that's kind of a big, it's a big thing. We're working on uh, putting out our renters capabilities right now and kind of redoing those. Um, so that's a big chunk of work that is taking um, a good amount of time. So kind of the way that we plan it, it's like quarterly, how we do our planning overall. So we have our sprint planning. And then we'll plan out quarters so we can kind of like somewhat plan out each sprint from a further distance. Um, so I'd say, I guess to answer your question, quarterly is kind of how we work things, at least for what I do. Um, but like, you know, like if you come to the end of the sprint and a little bit of work is left over, obviously it's got to get done. No one's going to get mad at you that it didn't get done because of that sprint. That's just, you know, you could not quite complete what you committed to, but it's not like you're penalized or anything for that. But again, team by team basis, industry by industry basis on how that kind of stuff works. Um, I'd say on all of the teams I've been on, and I've been in three different business spaces thus far, that's how it's operated. So maybe that's kind of how it is at Liberty. I think it honestly just depends on where you are, but you know, no one's going to get mad at you if things don't quite go right or quite right. But I, you know, on my other team, two teams ago, I, I did work a little bit of overtime trying to push stuff out because we did have deadlines that were set by um, our stakeholders and we weren't the ones setting those deadlines. So, you know, like I said, just depends. Um, and then in terms of pay, depends on a lot of other things too. Um, I am on a salary. I'm not paid by hour or based on projects. Um, and, you know, depending on what company you work at, that will obviously be different. 
per what level you're at and all that kind of stuff. Um, when you become salaried or maybe you start out like that, it just depends. I think when you're in the software engineering space, it's going to be more standard where you are paid hourly. And then once you get to a certain grade level or job title or whatever, then you become salaried. Or if you are in consulting, I think it's a bit different and, you know, it might be you, I think they have this thing called like billable hours, stuff like that. I'm sure all your accounting and finance friends know how to answer those questions way better than I do. Um, but yeah, so I think that for in the consulting sphere, it's a bit different and you're paid more um, based on hours, projects, stuff like that. So did you have to negotiate a salary or did they say this is what we're offering you? Um, and, how, and how does that work? Um, so for my initial offer, I actually went to um, career services to ask if it was competitive because I really had no idea. Um, and so after chatting with her, um, I actually forget her name, which I feel bad about. Um, <laughs> she was like, oh my God, take that. That's such a, you know, very competitive. Um, so I did not negotiate after that interaction, which I would definitely recommend utilizing career services for that kind of stuff. Even after you get the offer to be like, Hey, is this competitive? Are these good benefits? Because you know, it, it that's when you're 20, you have no idea what benefits are. So I think that that kind of stuff career services is very helpful for and i felt really confident taking this job without negotiating um because of the response that i got from um career services 